Are you getting married and you have questions? Well, I have answers. I'm doing a Q&A today. I'm Kevin Elizabeth, your go-to for wedding content, advice, and inspiration. And a lot of you have submitted questions to me on all kinds of different categories, and I'm going to be answering them today. If you guys are new here, I have over 170 videos of content on all kinds of topics, so be sure to subscribe, comb through all my videos. If you have a topic idea, search for it, because odds are I have probably already made a video on it. But let's go ahead and jump right into these questions. So the first set of questions have to do with booking vendors. So the first question is, what is your best advice for hunting for a photographer? So what I recommend is finding out your aesthetics. So I probably have a video on this, but you could search it. But anyways, go ahead and maybe go to Instagram and start searching hashtag San Diego wedding photographer or whatever city you live in and combing through, maybe saving to a folder on Instagram pictures that you like. And if you see a pattern that you are finding the same two, three photographers over and over again, I would contact those. Hopefully they're in your budget, but that's a good way to start to try to find photographers. You can also find them on the not um, places like that or if you really love one particular wedding blog like Style Me Pretty, or you love green wedding shoes, they often have vendor guides that you can go to and look for vendors there. Second question is, it's hard sometimes to choose a photographer based on their portfolio simply because the photos you're seeing are not of yourself. So like it's hard to know how it will feel to have those photos since they're of strangers. Any advice on how to overcome this? That is a tough one. And I'll say, honestly, you just have to trust that photographer. If you love their work, you've chatted with them on the phone, that's very important to do. I have a whole video about consultations. Then just have that good feeling about them. You love all of their pictures. You've seen their full gallery. So you've seen a full wedding day, hundreds of photos from a full wedding day. You love their work. Then you're most likely going to love yourself in their photos once you get them back. Any tips on evaluating vendors where you can't see a portfolio? For example, a DJ or a day of coordinator, yes. So I would take recommendations from people who were there on site on the wedding. So for example, I would take a recommendation from your planner or your photographer for a band or a DJ because they are the kind of vendors who are there on the wedding day and they see those DJs, they see those bands and they know how they perform during a wedding. So take recommendations from those people. And then when it comes to something like a day of coordinator, I would take a recommendation from a photographer on them because they see how it works or maybe take a recommendation from your venue coordinator who is not a planner by the way because they know how that day of coordinator operates if they're any good at their job things like that because pictures on a day of coordinators website aren't helpful because a day of coordinator isn't doing design sure they might be setting up things but design has nothing to do with their job unless you hire them for design so again find people who have worked alongside them on the wedding day and take their their recommendation. This next set of question has to do with like personal aesthetics and being in photos. So the first question is, as someone who doesn't normally wear makeup, is heavy makeup really required to photograph well? Yes and no. So I would not say that if you are somebody who normally wears like little to no makeup, but you have to go to heavy makeup to photograph well. But the camera does not show as much makeup as like you're wearing in person. So like if you're wearing level six makeup, the camera might only show like level three makeup. So you do kind of have to wear a little bit more just to get it to show up. It's, it's really strange. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. So yes, you do have to amp it up a little bit, but I would say don't go from like your normal level two to like a level eight because you are gonna hate the way you look in person. But if you're like a level two, maybe go to a level four just so it shows up. If you're somebody who doesn't like the look of a full lash set, maybe have your makeup artist place a couple of individual fake lashes just to give your eyes a little bit more pop. So just go a little bit more. This is why trials are very important so that you get the look of the makeup and then test it out in photos. Take photos of yourself, not just looking in the mirror. That's the way you'll really tell. But yeah, you gotta amp it up a little bit, but you don't have to go from nothing to heavy. How to tell people they aren't in family photos in a nice way. For example, the distant aunt who invites a cousin-in-law to get in the photo and the aunt isn't even supposed to be in the photo. This is where having a really good confident photographer comes in who can do the dirty work for you. And also too, one thing I recommend is if you're having a first look, there's so many benefits to it. That way you can have the family who you actually want in your photos all gathered before the wedding, before maybe those aunts and cousins who you don't want in those photos are even aware that photos are happening. So you can kind of like 
sneakily get them done, get them out of the way. And then after the wedding, maybe the aunt asked for that photo and you're like, oh yeah, we'll grab the photographer later for the photo. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. So that's one way to get it done. And then if you are actually having to do all of your family photos or maybe some of them after the ceremony where people like that can see that it's happening, then you can have that photographer be like, oh, um, that's not on my list quite yet, but maybe we can get to that at the end if we have some time. So you need a photographer who is perfectly capable of saying things like that and jumping in and saying, we're on a tight timeline here to get these done. I can add that in at the end if we have some time or hey, can you just grab me later during the reception and we'll do this on the dance floor or something like that. That's how you gotta do it. Where would you recommend that I purchase robes, PJs for getting ready photos? So I have a video all about something like this, like getting ready robes, PJs, things like that. But I have a couple of companies that I have seen before. One of my friends makes Robed with Love. I love her robes. I shoot a lot of her campaigns. Those are really beautiful. I love them because they have a little bit of lace on them. They're very beautiful. She's got all kinds of styles, so those are great. They're on the higher end, but the quality is amazing. I wore one for my wedding. But there's all kinds of ones. I mean, you could go really cheap and you could get someone Amazon. You can find someone Etsy. So there's, there are some places to look. Okay, just a random miscellaneous wedding question. Spins on old traditions. For example, instead of a bouquet toss, it's a stuffed animal toss to see who will get a new dog or cat first. Well, first of all, I really like that idea. Um, second of all, I think as far as traditions go, I think we are going to start seeing traditions being broken up and changed because you don't have to do the traditions. And I'm gonna answer this a little bit later for another question, but I do like the idea of turning your wedding into your way to reflect who you are and what your personalities are. And for example, like instead of maybe cutting a cake, if you guys really love, I don't know, like fruits and melons and watermelons, like having some cool, I don't know, some culinary artist craft some sort of watermelon cake when you cut into the watermelon and do something cool like that. So I think when it comes to traditions, thinking of things that make you you. What do you like? What are you all about? How can you turn that into your wedding? So for example, somebody was talking to me on Instagram the other day and they were saying, how can I have like a kitten bouquet? And I said, well, what if you did like have a local humane society bring over kittens? I don't know if this is possible, but maybe more possible for puppies who aren't as scared of noise, bring over some animals for an animal cocktail hour during a cocktail hour. And then you have guests be able to play with them and a little quiet designated space and you make a donation to the Humane Society and that's how they do that and it's really cute and maybe one of the guests might be interested in adopting later and putting their name down on the list. There's stuff like that that you can do like it's your wedding it's a, just a party basically it's a party where you can do whatever you want it doesn't have to be the wedding by the rules of tradition like some people are snobby and they're gonna say yes it does I say who cares do whatever you want. All right next questions are going to be design related so the first one asks how many candles do you recommend for a table, both low votives and tapers? And honestly, that really is going to be very dependent on how many florals you have on your table, the height of your florals, how big your table is. Do you have a round table? Do you have a long table? Um, are you having ta tall taper candles, low votives? Um, are you having like medium height candles? And that is a question that I would really ask your florist. I see a lot of florists being the ones to handle the candles, whether they like it or not. And so I would really ask your florist about that because there's so much that you can do. I've seen tables where they're entirely candles and no florals. And I've seen tables that have like very few candles and a ton of florals. So it honestly really depends. That's probably not the answer you're looking for, but consult with your florist and they will be able to tell you what looks best. The next question is in your book, you recommend a nice background for cake cutting. Is floor to ceiling windows okay? Um, first of all, I'm so glad you read my book. That is very sweet. That is a really great way to support me to go buy my book on Amazon or if your international Etsy. I also have a like e-reader version available on Amazon as well. And I love that you have bought my book. So thank you so much. That's a great way to support me guys because YouTube watching my ads is great as well. But if you do get my book, it is a great gift to also give somebody who is getting engaged. And it's a cute coffee table book. It's very chic too, especially if you home, have a home office. Um, but as far as cake backgrounds go, I have talked about the fact that a lot of people just shove them in the corner. Sometimes they're under like the exit sign and it's not the cutest place. And I understand that for some some people it's the only option but if you were to put it in front of floor to ceiling windows that is a pretty option but just be aware that it is possible depending on how your photographer uses lighting in your reception that there could be a little glare on the window from their flash or from whatever lighting they're using hopefully they know how to strategically light so that they could potentially avoid that 
but it is a possibility. Is it a big deal? Potentially or potentially not at all. It just really depends on how big that glare is. I'm a wedding floral designer. I'd love to know upcoming wedding trends for design color floral. First off, I think we are going to definitely be seeing more and more color. I've talked about this a lot. I also think that what we are going to be seeing a lot more of, especially as more and more Gen Z people get married, is being more personalized in your design. Because I truly feel like one thing that Gen Z really values is authenticity and being true to who you are. And I think that we are going to start seeing them infuse that into their weddings so that when you walk into a wedding, it just doesn't look like it could be anybody's wedding. It's like, oh no, that's Matt and Dana's wedding or that's um, Dylan and Sam's wedding. Like I see them in it. And I think we're going to start seeing more of that infusing personality into your weddings. I think I probably have a video about this. You can search it. But anyways, I think we're going to start seeing more of that in different design trends. So the next questions have to do with the wedding industry in general. Is it taking longer for photos and videos to be edited due to the busy wedding season with all the pandemic backlog weddings? Yes and no. For some people, maybe most people are still trying to stick to the time that they stated in their contracts for editing. There's always going to be those people that you see on the internet. My photographer hasn't given me my photos in four years. And it, you're going to always see that kind of thing. But I think for most people, we're still sticking within our time that we've promised. Some people have had to book more weddings than they would normally book just to make up for the loss of weddings they had due to the pandemic. Also, we're in a 2022 wedding boom. There's a lot more weddings than there normally have been just because of the backlog. But I think a lot of people are still sticking to their normal time. Have you seen the wedding industry change after the pandemic? Yes, <laughs> yes, I have, absolutely. So I've seen this in a couple of ways. One way is the wedding boom has had so many weddings this year that it has made it tremendously difficult for vendors of many categories to find um, assistance and help for the wedding day. So for example, for me, there have been wedding dates where I have scoured the earth to find second photographers and assistants where all of my go-tos have been unavailable and I have had to search and search and search and use all of my contacts to find someone that is good and that I trust. I would never bring on someone that I, that I wouldn't trust. And a lot of florist friends I know, like they have trouble because everybody's already booked with their own weddings. And when you don't have your own wedding, then you're available to assist other people. But if you have your own wedding, then you can can. So everybody's fighting for the assistant. So that's been really, really difficult. Another thing that has been difficult is supply chain issues. And I've seen people on the internet who are like, supply chain issues aren't real. That's just made up. That's a hoax. It is very much real, absolutely real. For my bridal boutique, we had garment bags that dresses go into. The white ones were totally sold out from supply chain issues for a while. We had to switch to pink, which we didn't want to do, it's fine. We've also had where bra cups for alterations, like size B bra cups, those were out and we couldn't get them for a while. And so we've had things like that go out and we haven't been able to get them from supply chain issues. Also inflation, inflation has really hit the wedding industry really, really hard. And so for example, garment bags, all the little supply things that we have, prices have gone up, prices of our dresses in our store from the designers, they've raised the wholesale. So we then have to raise the retail. We can't not do that. Everything is going up. And this is not just to the wedding industry. This is for everything like groceries, like we're seeing everything go up. So yes, yes, I have absolutely. What's the number one thing that a wedding planner or day of helper for budget brides could do better to support you as a photographer to make sure the couple is set up for success? I love this question. That's so great. I love that you ask that. Honestly, I say like, give us the timeline that we want. We're not being divas when we ask for a certain timeline, I promise you. We always ask for, um, or at least I am very proactive in asking for a certain timeline because I want the optimal amount of time to get the best possible photos for my clients. I can absolutely be flexible, but it's so amazing when I'm like, hey, here's the timeline I would love to have. And the planner's like, great, you got it. And I'm like, yes, I love it. Like I love it so much because I know then that I can get like the optimal amount of time for every little piece of the wedding day. Now, if we have to shave five minutes off here or there, that's totally fine. But I always ask for the, like what I really want, like and hoping I get that. And if we have to negotiate a little bit, so totally okay. Also on the wedding day, when things are running behind, if you actually are trying to make sure that you keep it on time as much as possible so that we don't have to stay late, that's great too, because if we're having to stay late, like 
to a certain point, we have to charge overtime to the client or we just leave. I can only stay late so long for free. I've gotta pay my team and I, that comes out of my pocket. So that for, especially for budget brides, don't let the wedding reception run too late. Like make sure you're getting in those events that need to be captured, like the cake cutting, the toast, the first dances, parent dances. Even if you have to do some of them while guests are still eating, just to make sure that those events get covered before the photographers or videographers need to leave to save the client some money really really helpful for everyone involved so those I say I would say are the best two things and these couple questions here are personal what was your favorite wedding and why other than your own I'm gonna be honest with you and this can be disappointing to you I don't have a favorite wedding other than my own because I honestly don't browse weddings a lot my whole life is consumed by weddings left and right and when I'm on my personal TikTok and I see something wedding come up I swipe away so fast because I'm like I can't take any more wedding stuff I truly can't like I'm bombarded with it 24 7 so I have like favorite pictures that I've seen that I might have saved to like my Instagram but I really don't have a favorite wedding and it's just because I don't I really just don't and I'm sorry <laughs> uh, I love my own wedding though and the next question is who is your favorite wedding dress designer so I'll give you like two answers to that or maybe three so within my own bridal boutique I personally love Danny Tabbitt the most just because his designs to me feel the most like me. So I would say that would be my favorite in my own boutique. Now designer that I don't carry in my boutique, I really love Mira Zwillinger. I don't carry her in my boutique because she's far too expensive for the San Diego market. Her gowns are like 12,000 plus. Um, but I really love her designs. I think they're so beautiful. Marquesa, Marquesa is beautiful. I, but I love Marquesa's non-bridal. Like I love the non-bridal, but using it for bridal because that's what I did. Have you considered designing your own line of whimsical wedding dresses? Absolutely not. <laughs> and it's just way too much work. I would never do that. Um, I'm so flattered that you asked me that, whoever asked me that, because I think that's very sweet that you think that I have the ability and the talent to do that. I am not a designer. I am, I would say, a curator and an editor. So I am so much better at somebody bringing something that is created to me and me saying, let's use this, 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 not that, not that. And then saying, here's how we can tweak this one, tweak this one, edit that one and doing that. I am so much better at that. I cannot create, but I can edit and curate. So but thank you for that question. That's very sweet. Um, how's it going with your bridal shop? What's one thing you wish you knew before buying the business? <laughs> um, the shop is good. It's really busy. Um, every year we are just growing, growing, and growing, and that's been great. Um, we are just killing our sales goals. So that's fantastic. And what's one thing I wish I knew before buying the business? There's a lot of things I wish I knew before buying it. I guess I did not realize how hard it was going to be to manage such a high volume business because capitalism photography is such a low volume business on purpose. And also I wish that I knew how difficult it would be to manage people as in like have employees. And that's one thing that I, um, kind of threw myself in and had to learn on the job. And I will say that in the beginning, I was not super good at it. And now I've made great strides and I feel like I've grown so much in that role and I'm much better at it now. And I have just grown immensely in that. So that's one thing I wish I knew how hard that was going to be. What are your career ambitions? <laughs> that's, that's a huge question. I mean, I'll have the businesses for the foreseeable future. I do sometimes fantasize about going back to work for someone else and I can just like do a nine to five and clock out and like just be only responsible for my work and not for like a whole business and the whole weight is not on my shoulders because it is a lot of responsibility when you own your own business. And then when you're just an employee, like yes, you're working for the man or the woman, but like you, you leave and you go home and it's not like you're not the business. So it's very different responsibility and stress level, I would say. So maybe one day I'll return back to that. But for now, the shop, um, will I ever write another book? No, I will not. That was a lot of work. I'll never do that again. Some people ask me that. And yeah, that's, that's kind of it for now. Um, 
I, I just don't have any plans to change things up at the moment. I would like to go back to fostering kittens if I have more free time. So maybe next year I'll do that. And then other questions that you guys had, these are kind of things that I already have videos on um, or that I will make a video on. So what do I do with my wedding dress after the wedding? I just made a video on that. So I will link it down below for you guys. I have a whole video on exactly what you can do with it. Alternatives to dancing. So that was a great question. And I think you can find a lot of answers to that in my video on reception entertainment. So I will link that down below for you. And then outfits for engagement photos. So I actually have a really popular video all about engagement photo outfits, like as a general whole. But if you guys want to see me put together a video with specific like spring 2023 engagement outfits where I actually have shoppable links, then let me know and I will do that. Kind of how I did my fall 20. 22 uh, wedding guest dresses, I can do the same thing for engagement outfits. So let me know if you want to see that. I will take the time to do it, but it's a lot of work. So I only want to do it if like one person says, yes, do it. And then there's like a lot of upvotes or something. So show me that way. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this Q and A. Um, if you want me to do more of these in the future, let me know down below and I will do more. Again, if you are new here, like, and subscribe. I want you guys to comment down below, engage with me, like the video. I want to hear more from you guys so that I don't feel like I'm alone on the other side of this camera. I will see you guys next time. Bye.